This is Twit. The unfortunate title of this work is the Open VPN Post Audit Bug Bonanza. Oh dear. Uh, Everybody Guido, uses OpenVPN. Everybody, right? Yes, and I believe should. Uh, Guido Vranken uh, has a um, a full report in his WordPress uh, his blog on WordPress. I got the link to it in the show notes. But I, I to set the context of this, I need to share his claims. So he writes in the summary: I've discovered four important security vulnerabilities. In OpenVPN. Interestingly, these were not found by the two recently completed audits of OpenVPN code. Below, you'll find mostly technical information about the vulnerabilities and about how I found them, but also some commentary on why commissioning code audits isn't always the best way to find vulnerabilities. And I'll certainly be responding to to that as well. He says, after a hardening of the open VPN code as commissioned by the Dutch intelligence service, AIVD, and two recent audits, I thought it was now time for some real action, he says. Most of these issues were found through fuzzing. He writes, I hate to admit it, but my chops in the arcane art of reviewing code manually acquired through grueling practice are dwarfed by the fuzzer in one fell swoop. The mortal's mind, he says, can only retain and comprehend so much information at a time. And for programs that perform long cycles of complex, deeply nested operations, it is simply not feasible to expect a human to perform an encompassing and reliable verification. He writes, end users and companies who want to invest in validating the security of an application written in an, and he has in quotes, unsafe language like C, such as those who crowdfunded the open VPN audit should not request, he says, a manual source code audit but rather task the experts with the goal of ensuring intended operation and finding vulnerabilities using that strate- the, the strategy that provides the optimal yield for a given funding window. Now, just no, I disagree with pretty much everything he said so far, but there's value in this. He finishes, upon first thought, you'd assume both in, oh no this is me now <laughs> so uh okay so he says you know fuzzing rocks code audits fail so upon first thought you'd assume both endeavors boil down to the same thing uh, oh no i'm sorry this is him still saying his sell him talk his, his, uh, his voice. Upon first thought, you'd assume both endeavors boiled down to the same thing. But my fuzzing based strategy, he writes, is evidently more effective. I will argue that in a minute. What's more, once a set of fuzzers has been written, these can be integrated into a continuous integration environment for permanent protection henceforth. Whereas a code review only provides a snapshot security assessment of a particular software version. No argument there. He, f- he finishes, manual reviews may still be part of the effort, but only where automation, parens fuzzing, is not adequate. Okay, so first of all, just to make sure everybody understands, every, we all know what a code audit is. Fuzzing, as we've discussed in the past, is the art and practice of just throwing nonsense at the API or the communications channel of something and seeing if it breaks. I I remember way back years ago, uh, EI, the the EI security firm, E-E-Y-E, 
was, had a whole lab of Windows machines and they were finding problems. And, you know, and so like suddenly one of the machines would just stop because they their code had thrown some data at a function which it wasn't written to expect and the system would crash. And so as the fuzzer was doing this fuzzing, it was logging everything it was about to do so that they could rewind and repeat the problem and then go take a look manually at what the fuzzer had discovered. Okay, so my position is I strongly disagree that either approach is more or less valuable than the other. The two approaches are different, and it's that difference that makes both important. We know from so much coverage in the past on this podcast that there are definitely many classes of critical problems that fuzzing will not find. For example, subtle flaws in cryptographic implementations, secrets-based timing and power changes that would enable side channel attacks, unsafe assumptions about the use of fundamental cryptographic primitives. And I could go on like that all day talking about, about what it is that a cryptographer sees when they look at this kind of code that isn't about does it crash? It's about is it worth using? I mean, you know, if when it's working, is it secure? Um, so this notion that deliberate code auditing is not every bit as important as fuzzing is utter nonsense. That said, as we've, as you know, as we've talked about, fuzzing is a very powerful tool for discovering an entirely different class of very important bugs that could, as Guido correctly asserts, easily slip past code auditors. That's not the kind of problem they're looking for. It's not the kind of problem they really can look for, which is why fuzzing makes absolute sense in conjunction with code auditing. And as he points out, when, when, where he talks about a given funding window, he's right. Fuzzing is super cheap because it's automatable um, and it's super easy to do once it's been set up. So, yes, I'm delighted that he did this. I'm delighted that as a consequence, OpenVPN is even more solid than it was after the code audit, which made it better. Um, and now we've got the best of both approaches. But no one should think for a second that any money could have been saved by only using fuzzing instead of a careful code audit by crypto cryptography savvy coders and developers who who know how to take a look inside of this and make sure that th that the things they can see were done correctly there are things they can't see and that's where fuzzing can be very effective so you know hats off to guido for doing this uh, and i understand that he's proud of his results and he should be but it's not the case that one replaces the other. Should I, we I be hope... concerned about OpenVPN? I mean, did he find bugs that are, in fact? Yeah. Did, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I'm glad you asked. Yes. Uh, it has been fixed. So, oh, okay. uh, I mean, there was a remote, there, there, there were several crashes and something that may have been lev leverageable uh, to remote code execution. So, you know, the typical kinds of things that, that are problems uh, he definitely, you know, his fuzzer crashed open VPN and he found four different problems that like, like, like where you could double release some memory. And although he didn't take it to an exploit, he said, oops, you know, that's a bug in the code. Let's fix that bug. So it's, you know, the, the, the updated version of open VPN is already available. And I'm sure everybody who's got, uh, who has their, uh, their repositories being checked for updates. I looked and I saw that the, the free BSD uh, server at GRC uh, has an open VPN update waiting for it. So uh, yeah, so it's, it's important to, to update open VPN now 
uh, because we just found some more problems. The, but I didn't want anyone to come away thinking, oh, look, you know, that audit was BS and, and we should just like turn everything loose to fuzzing. It's like, no, we need both.